you mean like there's no person on the bus, like nobody's driving it? Um, yes, you can say that there is no people driving the vehicle. The vehicle is able to move autonomously. Here comes the future! Whoa, so basically the steering wheel is just moving by itself. There's a guy sitting there, but he's not doing anything. And it feels like I'm living in some kind of ghost movie. Self-driving autonomous vehicles. They made the news in recent years and Singapore is a global leader in this field. We've been testing and developing these technologies as we integrate more autonomous vehicles into our future transportation networks. These self-driving vehicles have already been successfully trialled and operated in places like Sentosa and Gardens by the Bay amongst others. If you're like me, you may be a bit nervous and sceptical about putting your life into the hands of these driverless vehicles, but the world is changing and I'm curious to get on one of these self-driving vehicles myself and investigate this topic more. I'm here today at ST Engineering's Operation Facility. SC Engineering is a global technology, defense, and engineering group that specializes in aerospace, electronics, land systems, and marine sectors. They have been at the forefront of developing autonomous vehicles and its ecosystems here in Singapore. This is Andy, and he's going to be giving me some insights into what the future of travel could look like. So, what do you guys actually do here? What we are developing here is autonomous bus. It's actually to provide public transport to the people of Singapore okay. into the near future. So, you guys are hoping to integrate uh, these autonomous buses to the actual like public transport system? Yes, that's right. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so you mean like there's no person on the bus? Like nobody's driving it? Um, yes, you can say that there is no people driving the vehicle. The vehicle is able to move autonomously. Like a robot? Yes, it's a light like robot. However, there must be a safety driver. In case of any emergency, the safety operator will take over the vehicle and manoeuvre it safely. Okay, that sounds good. So, um, are you guys making the buses here? Yes, we're actually making the buses here, testing out all the technology. Mm -hmm. And in fact, we have an autonomous bus network within the compound where the bus is able to travel autonomously from one point to another. So I just like like call, like flag the bus, or just a schedule or something? Um, actually, we got the apps. That sounds really cool. So can you show me the app? This is Matthew. Perhaps you can give you an overall view of how the system works. Is that the app? Uh, yeah, that's the app. That is where uh, you're going to book the booking for the autonomous bus. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty simple. It looks just like one of those uh, Grab or Gojek apps. So can I see how it works? You just have to select uh, the pickup point where currently we set up three. We will say uh, we have select a corner building and we go into this uh, second option KIS. And lastly, uh, you just have to select number of passengers and you just have to press both. So um, what is going on here? This is the AVMS which uh, we can uh, monitor quite a number of various things like uh, battery status. In this system, we can also see the various camera and sensors views so that uh, the remote operator like here can see what is going on on the vehicles. Okay. Like this is a front view of the vehicles. Then we can also toggle to like a uh, back view so that you can see the current the one vehicle is moving. Yeah, so I see the bus is arriving. So shall we head to the pickup point? Yes. Right now you see, it's actually at the zebra crossing, it's actually waiting to see if there is no people, uh. then you will just come across. Alright. Yep. You see? Okay. It's safe. Don't worry. Safe here. We're not on the road yet. Okay. okay. Our bus has arrived. Okay, welcome to the future. And it's it's quite nice. It looks like a normal bus basically, except this is like the seats are circular. Besides that, it's pretty much the same. We haven't started moving yet, so. We'll see. Uh, once you're on the, on the autonomous ride, you've got to put on the seatbelt. How, how does the bus know when we're all on board and it's ready to leave? Okay, still remember, just now we have made a booking. Yeah. Yes, over here, we have pressed after boarding, you see, waiting for other passengers. Yeah. Because we might not be the yeah. passenger that is uh, making the booking. Yeah. Once all the passengers went aboard and everybody press, and mm -hmm. if indeed we feel all the hand packs, then the vehicle will move off. Okay. If the temp bags is not filled up, the vehicle will move off after one minute of waiting time. Okay, okay, okay. Yes. Right. Here he goes. Whoa, so basically the steering wheel is just moving by itself. There's a guy sitting there, but he's not doing anything. I guess just monitoring, making sure nothing goes wrong. And it feels like I'm living in some kind of ghost movie no. where a ghost is handling it. Yeah. Right now, actually, the vehicle is able to move autonomously uh -huh. and the safety operator is there to ensure that, you know, if any emergency occurs, then 
he will take over. He is actually making a turn on his own. Okay. You see? He will detect all the ambience. He got sensors around the vehicle to uh -huh. ensure that we are still within our path. And so taking consideration into the surrounding. Okay. Yep. So right now, if you are, if you are, if you are looking over here, there is vehicle moving from the right going out to the entrance. The vehicle will be able to detect you know, when am I supposed to move on. And we just went back to the path. Okay. Yep. And right now you see there is people walking across the zebra crossing. Yeah. And our vehicle actually detected them. Right, right, right. And right now the vehicle stopped until it's coast clear. Then the vehicle will move off. And you can see here, there even when human driver drive right, this is uh, actually a blind spot. So the vehicle is uh, able to detect all these blind spots, everything, and we just move to the So I, I think it, it feels safe, but I also think it might be because we're in a controlled environment. You know, mm -hmm. I might feel differently if we're on the main road. Yeah, I think I'm just like a little bit old school. So yeah. it would take me a while to uh, adjust to the idea of like being comfortable in an autonomous vehicle, yeah. uh, 100%. Okay, so we've been on this ride for a while and the more I'm on it, the more I feel like more comfortable. Yes, it does like um, stop, start, stop, start because it detects people. But I think I am trying to compare it to the ideal like you know super smooth journey whereas actually to be honest when I take a bus normally there's also this experience of you know it stops you know it is, there's like a slight jerky movement whenever it stops that's all normal so you see um, right now you can see the, the thing is quite jerky is because right now we are still under development and we are providing more allowable distance however during the future we, I believe that we can meet the right up to the standard of you know how the bus is actually traveling in the world So we have come to the end of the ride. What do we do now? Once you reach your destination, we will be able to show you how do we our service. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, okay, yeah. so there's a pop-up here. Uh, yes. let's, let's do four stars because it's pretty good but there's always okay. room to improve. Yeah. And um, that's that. And let me leave a comment. So like, um, thanks. So just like at the end of a normal private hire car, right? You leave a rating for, like, usually for the driver, but this time there's no driver. So I guess I'm rating the experience. And you know, you can actually provide us with feedbacks, how we can improve. Okay, so actually I guess the person who got my thanks is Matthew sitting at the ABMS control. Uh, yes. He's like, oh, all right. Yep. Okay, so we're back in the garage after our ride in the future. Um, and this seems to be the charging port, right? If we are taking a vehicle for approximately about three hours, then it takes about approximately about 45 minutes to one hour charge. Okay, so I have to admit that before I got on, I was pretty nervous. So actually just now when the camera stopped rolling and we were on the way back to the garage, there was something moving so fast that we couldn't even see it. The bus actually detected like something running and it came to a jam brake. And that actually, um, even though it was like a really abrupt stop, it really made me feel much more secure because then I realised that it really does stop. It's not just when someone is casually walking nearby and they're like, okay, let's come to a slow stop. But even in emergency situations, it seems like the bus can react really fast. So that actually made me feel ironically way more safe and I think I definitely feel better now. So for me, just to share with you, but my friends who have never taken autonomous vehicles mm -hmm. think about it. The general perception is quite 50-50. Some people are like a little bit scared like me and some people are like, oh yeah, that's the future, it's gonna be so great. A lot of people are like, oh, it feels like it's so futuristic, you know. Yes. You just can't imagine it right now, but I'm sure it'll arrive much earlier than we all think it will. Yes. So now that I've gotten the chance to ride in an autonomous vehicle, I want to know a little bit more about what goes on behind the scenes. Obviously, they do a lot of testing before letting it out into the real world and I'm here with Sebastian who can tell me a little bit more about what they do in the virtual world. What we do here is to simulate. Uh, we do a lot of uh, modelling. We actually build a digital twin so that we can do a lot of uh, scenario testing in the digital world. So what you're saying is that you're creating a virtual copy of the real world to test out the autonomous vehicle. Yeah, so this is the virtual world that we have created the c trend, the testing circuit in NTU. Hmm. As you can see, it's the exact replica of a real model, a real-life uh, testing centre. And that's also in NTU? Yeah, this is NTU. This ah, is the physical real world okay, and okay. that is the virtual world. Cool. Yeah. Once the environment is done, we can actually test it in different time zones, even different kind of lighting. You know, you have raining condition, we got the evening without the lamppost lighting, we got the cloudless day, bright cloudless day and hazy. Uh, situation. You can test anything under the sun. Okay. Uh, I would say 
whatever you can imagine. But where in Singapore has no night lamppost lighting, that's very scary. That's an extreme condition. Not everything just works. I mean, we are looking at the extreme condition, that unique condition, okay. the unknown, unknown condition that you wouldn't even imagine. Right, like if one day like all the lampposts suddenly start exactly. working. Oh, okay, great, great. Yeah. Oh, that's good to yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, this is also one of the interesting scenario that we have. You know, we know a lot of uh, wild balls, you know, running around in NTU. We can test the wild ball in our virtual world. So we need not to go and find a wild ball. That is so realistic because yes. actually I study NTU and there are really wild balls running around. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you're creating many random scenarios. In this case, you have a wild ball, but it could be anything. Yeah, it can be something like uh, birds flying around. Mm. Yeah, and also probably like a plastic bag fly through the windscreen. Yes, totally. We can do that at all. Okay, this is a common scenario that we do a, cr a pedestrian crossing at the cross junction. Uh, we are using this uh, virtual testing to identify whether our design is adequate or not. So from, from here, you can see there's a red box that actually identified that the pedestrian is moving. Mm -hmm. uh, once it moves out of the uh, so-called risky zone, you turn green. There oh. you go, the bus will continue. So we will know exactly how and when the bus will react according to, you know, scenarios. Okay, um, so what's next? Okay, it says machine learning. So let me guess. Um, you are using uh, the scenarios that you just modelled to teach and train your bus to react to these scenarios. Absolutely right. You can see that over here that they actually can classify the motorcycle, ah. the road sign, the lamppost, uh, the traffic light. Yeah, so from here and even the roads and the segregate between the roads and the glass. Oh, cool. So from here, you, you actually can learn how to uh, perform better. Mm. Yeah. So what is this part? It's just a... This is a LiDAR point cloud, which means that how the machine perceives things in the digital world. Okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. So you can, tell, you can tell the difference between like cars, motorcycles, yeah. trucks... Yes, and we can yeah. classify it differently. Okay, so once you've finished teaching your bus and you're satisfied with the progress in the virtual world, what happens after that? Okay, so what happened next is we have to do a so-called check, virtual world versus the actual world. Okay, so what am I looking at here? This is the actual world and this is the virtual one and, and this is a, a dummy? Yeah, this is how we test our vehicle in the physical world. Okay. So from that, for, for that scenario, we basically have uh, able to measure all those uh, safety dimensions. In the virtual world, we can validate it. It's you know, up to a certain accuracy, maybe 0.1 centimeter. Okay, so what are some benefits of testing in the virtual world versus the real world? Okay, for virtual testing, we, we can actually test anytime any day, anywhere. You need not to wait for a, a, a bright day, sunny day. Mm. You can even test a uh, rainy day mm. scenario in the office. Mm. And uh, in fact, it saves a lot of costs. Uh, what we do is uh, physical test, you can take up to 10 people test, but in virtual, one person. And we just let the simulation run 24-7 mm. and the next day we got a result and we can analyze. Okay, but then what are some challenges of doing virtual testing? So, there's one of the challenges is the unknown unknown. Mm. Uh, creating the scenario that it could happen, but we don't know. Mm. We actually need to go into the real world to collect the data and we need to plus some imagination mm. and creativity. Then we were able to cover the caps. Okay, so besides the technology part of it, mm. what are some other challenges that you face in implementation? Okay, the challenges uh, definitely includes uh, government regulation, mm. insurance policies, mm. and most important is the public acceptance. It will take a number of years to gather enough of data to support these three areas of work. I hope that the autonomous bus deployment can happen in 15 years time and uh, with that implementation we can actually provide uh, better assistance to elderly and also the disabled because it's not just from point A to point B it's about smart technology we can use that to, to provide a lot of uh, good initiative so for example the bus can uh, identify that, that there's an elderly you know approaching and the, the, the bus can actually slow down mm -hmm. and wait for the elderly mm -hmm. and then you can actually uh, extend the ramp so for the wheelchair, you know, to you know, able to go into the bus because by then there will be no safety drivers. That's true. Yeah. Then with that, when the elderly need to come out from the bus, he will prompt the passenger that someone can help. Mm. And that actually encourages people to connect with one another. So that's actually really great. So you actually don't see it just as a technology making the country more efficient or doing everything for people who need it, but also encouraging people to help one another. Yes.
Okay, so we've come to the end of the episode and while I must admit that I came to the episode a skeptic, I am just that much more convinced now. We clearly still have a long way to go before this is implemented everywhere. My own experience today with the autonomous vehicles were pretty good. I have faith that it's just going to get better and better. And you know, it's not just going to improve the efficiency of travel, it's also helping us rethink the role that travel plays in our lives. Okay, so this episode is coming to you from 2020, um, aka the lost year. If you're watching this from 2035, 15 years from now, I hope that you know the world is much better and that this video is a very um, fun blast from the past. So guys, this is the last episode of the series. Um, thank you so much for watching. You can still hit like, subscribe and the bell so you get notified when other videos come out. Um, but I want to thank all of you for watching The Public Investigator. It's been a blast and I'll see you guys next time hopefully. Bye!